Hello everyone, this is Ken. I'm gonna show you how I change a tailpiece um, today. You know, a lot of people have been asking me, can I do this at home by myself? The answer is yes, you can if you have the right tools and also the right uh, information on how to change a tailpiece. So, uh, first thing that I would say that you would definitely need is something to prop up the cello nicely. Now, because I'm in a, my violin shop right now, so I have a cello stand, but most of you won't have a cello stand at home. So if you wanna do this on your bed or on your table, make sure you put a um, couple layers of towel, um, those bathing towels or beach towels or even um, you know a fl a flat pillows so that you can prop up the cello so that it won't rock back and forth because the bottom of the cello is, has an arching on it. So prop up the cello, um, you know, on either end so that it's sitting nicely and flat. Um, second of all, you need this. This is a post stick. Um, very, very easily to get anywhere. Staples, anything. Just post sticks. And the reason we need these is for actually marking the bridges. Um, the bridge, actually. We want it to mark and tape where your bridge currently is. Um, so we know that when we put the um, bridge back on, we know exactly where we're gonna put that. Um, so, put we put the, line it out. I always like to put one on the corner and one at the back. Uh, there's, you really don't need to put one in the front as long as your side and the back is covered so you know where to put put that. Now, I use a towel um, to put right underneath the current tailpiece because when I lose this tension of the string, I want to make sure that the tailpiece, when it drops, it doesn't scratch the cello, okay? So, um, so we're going to loosen up the string now. So, I'm not going to lose the string completely, you know, off. I'm going to just loosen it up so that it's enough for me to lift up the string and take the bridge and put it on the side. Don't lose it. Now, Remove each of the string from its current hook. Now, it's a safe practice to leave the string on the side. Try not to leave it on the top of the cello because sometimes your hand rubs against one of those balls and it could, you know, could scratch the top of the cello. Remove your current tail piece, put it on the side. Take your new tail piece. Um, you know, just, just one other thing. A lot of people say, well, is my sound post going to fall? The answer is, if your sound post is, it, it will, you know, it falls um, during this part of the installation process while your cello is basically, un, is not moving, is you know, sitting like this, it's not moving, then you have a problem. Then your, that means your sound post is actually too short. Uh, or is placed incorrectly that when you take off the bridge your sound post fall that's that shouldn't be the case that is the cello being unhealthy uh, so take your new tail piece all right and my tail piece the one that I um, sent to everybody comes with these Technora cords these actually cords that holds about 600 pounds so what I want you to do is that I want you to kind of just pull it out and go loop around your cello at the bottom and just see approximately where it will be okay so for example I'm gonna be my guesstimate this is the guessing part this is the part that we actually have to spend some time because technically we're going to be getting this uh, after length to an F sharp so I'm going to guesstimate around this much room, about an inch, and then I'm actually going to take that around here, and I'm going to make a dead knot out of it. 
a lot of people said, you know, you have to make that fisherman's knot, things like that. No, you don't need to do that. I've done this hundreds of times and it's perfectly fine not to use a fisherman's knot. Just take up that knot and try it again. Mm, too short. Okay, so loosen up the knot and make the knot a little bit farther. Farther away. So that just give yourself enough room to just experiment with the placing of the tailpiece. Okay, so this is approximately how much room that I want for this tailpiece. Now, bear in mind, I've done this hundreds of times, so I'm guesstimating that this distance when I put the bridge on will be somewhere around an F sharp. Okay, so this takes experience. Um, even a very well-trained luthier is not going to guarantee you that it's going to be an F sharp because, but most of them won't, don't even know what an F sharp is probably. Anyway, um, so this is approximately what we're going to do. Approximately, okay? So I'm going to just, you see, this is a dead knot that I just made. I just tie a dead knot right over there. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to tie another knot for safety, okay? It's unnecessary. I've never done this thing, um, you know, two knots until recently. One of the, the tailpiece that I installed actually slipped. So I'm actually going to use another knot here. So the one right after the other so that it won't slip at all, okay? So here you go. So this is like that. I'm going to tie a dead knot right there. Don't worry about this part right now. This is something that we're going to cut later. Um, don't cut it now because we may have to adjust this several times to get that F sharp we want. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And when we do that, we're going to stretch it a little bit. Ah, stretch, just making sure that the knot is nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to loop it back on. And that, we're going to place it right on top of this towel. It won't scratch anything. So anyway, now I'm going to put the string back on. Okay, so I'm going to put the string back on the tailpiece. One at a time. I always start with the C string. And then, and then the G. And in fact, before I put on the A and the D, I'm actually gonna put the bridge back on already. This way, I can start tying it up. Just to see where I am approximately, okay? Okay, now I'm actually going to put my D string and A string back. So I'll put the A one on first. It really doesn't matter which string you put on as long as you put them on um, correctly at, this, at the correct spot, okay? Meaning that the D string goes in the D string hook, etc. All right, so now notice that I put this bridge back exactly where these post sticks are, okay? Literally right back at the corner marking exactly the place that I took the bridge off. Okay, so that way that I can just see exactly where I am right now. Now, very important part is that when you put the bridge back on and you tighten up the string, the bridge is gonna move forward, okay? So it's gonna make your bridge lean. Now, this is something that's very important that you need to start, you know, 
you need to push the bridge back, holding the bridge, holding the two legs, and using your thumb, you know, holding it by the G and the C string and the D and the A on the top over here. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then gently just move it back a little bit. Okay? So don't do, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do this and then they push and then the whole bridge just collapse and fly and not good. You hold the bridge with your um, pinky and your ring finger like this, hold it on the leg and then hold the bridge. Just push it gently, okay? So now we're gonna tune the cello back up, making sure that, it, making sure that the loop, the tail cord is looping around the cone of the, of the, um, of the end pin correctly. And also making sure that the tail gut is spread out where you are supposed to, you know, where your tailpiece was before. Now, this is this is a this is the part of the the installation part that you need to experiment it with a few times, knowing exactly where is the place on the saddle, this black black part here, where it is a, a, a nice area for your tail gut to go across. Now, a lot of people said that you know you know by by moving it one millimeter to the left or the right it'll make a difference in sound yes it will be so um but at the same time making sure that it's on mostly to the center okay you don't want to have lopsided um you know being falling off and just be careful that this part when the two tail core is on the saddle it is on the center um, I like to spread them a little bit more because that way I could adjust it, um, you know, for you know easier, narrow if I want to later. Okay. So that being all said, it's time to tighten up um, the strings. Okay, all right. So this, that being done, let me check. Is the bridge straight? Pretty much, okay. Pretty much straight. Now I take off this bubble wrap here um, that I put on the, you know, the hook. Um, all right, so let's see. Okay, so we have A. All right, now we're gonna check. I got lucky again. All right, well, this is from experience that you, I personally really like the C string after length over here to be an F sharp. And the reason is because, uh, as I mentioned on the other video, is that the cello, our cello, the weakest string on our cello is the D string. It's the string that does not speak as well. It's not, I mean, the A string is very powerful, very bright. G and C, a lot of time we put some super strong, you know, strings on it, just like the, uh, the spiracore tungstens or whatever. You know, it, it makes it, you know, like a, almost like a trombone almost. We, we love that for some reason. And... Uh, but the D string is always that middle child syndrome, you know, that it's, it's muffled, it, is, it doesn't speak correctly, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of sluggish. So I love the, the, you know, the F sharp on the C string here because it actually enhances the D string quite a bit if you have the F sharp here because this F sharp is actually the natural harmonic of the D string, right? Everyone playing the cello knows that the D string 
natural harmonic for the D string is the F sharp. So if this F sharp here can enhance the D open D string, therefore it should make the cello overall more balanced. Okay, so that being said, um, good. So I have an F sharp, that's exactly what I need. So when everything is all said and done, remove the post stick gently. Do not rip it. You might rip out the varnish, um, but just gently remove it. Gently remove it. And now, you could take a scissor, and we're going to take a scissor. I'm gonna take a little scissor. I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna cut it. It's very easy. Now this Technora, although it is very, very stiff, 600 pound pull, um, but you could cut it with the knife or scissor quite well. Once you cut it, um, tuck it underneath it here so you won't see it. Uh, it's just nothing but fuzz. Uh, so there you go. It is not difficult at all to change a tailpiece by yourself. Just making sure that you have the proper tool and you saw it. The tool is post-it notes, um, a towel, and um, literally just a towel to prop up the cello or cello stand or a pillow. As you can see, it's easy as that. Um, you don't need to go to your violin maker uh, to do that if you don't have one near you. But the most important thing is that F sharp length over here. Not everybody can get that on the first try. Um, if you get it a little bit too long, it's going to be uh, lower than an F sharp. If you get a little bit too short, it's going to be a G, which is not so bad. G is not so bad. But if you can go on to a G sharp, A, you know, it, that's too short. And the cello is not going to be able to breathe. So, uh, and if it's too long at the bottom, the cello will feel sluggish. Um, so, I hope uh, this video can help you on, uh, you know, installing your own tailpiece. It's, it, it's not that complicated. If you have any questions, please write to me or send me a message. Thank you very much for watching.